Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to talk about a video and post that I released back in December of 2020 because I've been receiving a lot of questions, a lot of emails about this one specific video. And the video was, should you upgrade to macOS Big Sur? How to make the right upgrade decision for your particular circumstances. So for your Mac, for your instance of Logic, for your plugins, for your hardware. And my recommendation at the time, because Big Sur had just come out alongside the new Silicon Macs, and my recommendation was to hold off. Don't upgrade yet, at least until you've done a little bit of research, you've double-checked, with the hardware that you like to use for creating music or anything else that's plugged into your Mac for that matter, and the plugins and software that you use. Are they compatible with the new Mac OS? Because in the last couple of years, Mac OS has caused a huge upheaval for both users and for the developers and manufacturers that we like to use for software and hardware. And I made sure to include links to resources so you can make the right decision for you. You know, I included links to Sweetwater, to Pro Tools Expert, because they had lists of all the plugin developers, hardware manufacturers, to see who's compatible, who's not, at least who has said that they are or are not. And I made sure to include resources to Apple's own documentation for backing up your system. This is the most important part. Make sure to create a time machine backup just in case things don't work out and you can roll back your system, you know, safely and not be hung up in Big Sur very unhappy with Apple and with everybody else. You know, some users at that time had auto update enabled on their Mac or they made the choice to update to Big Sur and they had no problems. All their hardware worked, all of their software worked. So, you know, they were looking at that video that I uploaded back in December and they were like, why is he recommending this? Everything works for me. Why, why is he telling people not to update? Well, other users have reported to me and left comments that they've had a miserable time at that time with the update where nothing that they need to work would work or they had some sort of problem and they couldn't roll things back. And, you know, they made the choice or they had auto update on whatever the case may be. You know, every person's macOS experience is a little different. And a macOS update is very different from that of just an app update. You know, when Logic updates, Maybe it might be inconvenient. Maybe you'll run into a bug that's a problem. But when your Mac updates the entire OS, that's the entire architecture of your computer. And something could change under the hood that none of us could have even expected. So it's always good to create a backup. It's always good to tread carefully into the Mac OS update situation. Because many folks are looking to me and saying like, Chris, is it safe to update to Big Sur? I see in your videos that you are on Big Sur yourself. And that answer only lies with you and the research that you have to do to ensure that your hardware and software are compatible with the new Mac OS. What I can tell you is I've been on Big Sur for maybe like a month or two now, and everything's working A-OK. And I think most plugin developers are, you know, up to speed on Big Sur. I can't speak for all of them, but I think most are pretty much up to speed. I will say that I had a little bit of a hiccup with my Apogee Ensemble. It's my audio interface. It works. Just about everything about it works, but there are a couple hangups. And if we open the Apogee Control app, in fact, if we take a look at sample rate, I'm not going to change it right now because I'd probably throw my whole system off if suddenly this decides to work. But at the moment, as far as I know, for the Apogee Ensemble, the Element Series, the Symphony Series, changing the sample rate from within the Control app is not possible. So I actually have to unplug my Ensemble from my iMac, which is on Big Sur. I have a MacBook Pro that can no longer update past Catalina. So I have to plug it into that system to switch the sample rate. And I don't really do that too often, but sometimes I have to switch from 44.1 to 48K. So it's a little bit of a hangup, not a huge one. Just about everything else in the control app works a okay. But some of the audio device controls, which I love intensely and I've covered in my whole video on why the Apogee Element series was awesome and is awesome, is that the direct monitoring button does not work Some of the other audio device controls are not working right now. They are expected to update based on Apogee's website July, August. So I'm just waiting for that, you know, to get up to speed. And hopefully they're also supposed to be up to speed with the new Silicon Max as well, which I'm really excited about. And in fact, if we take a look as well at this Apple Note that I have, I actually have a running list that I've been keeping since Big Sur was released 
of what plugins, what hardware is compatible with not only Big Sur, but also Silicon Max. If we take a look at the top of the list here, these are my most important plugins and hardware. The things that I find most important, they also include some apps that are not music specific, but right at the top, the Apogee Ensemble just doesn't work with the new Apple Silicon Mac. So I'm really excited to upgrade to an Apple Silicon Mac, but what am I gonna do if my audio device won't work with it. My interface, I need my interface if nothing else. So I'm waiting on that. Some plugins are working like FabFilter, which are the only plugins really I use anymore. Um, the Novation controllers, I actually replaced all of my complete controllers with the launch keys. I love the launch keys. I love the integration with Logic. But though the launch keys will work with M1 Max, the integration with Logic is is not there yet. They need to fix some things under the hood. So again, waiting on that. But up until then, I was keeping a list of what's compatible with Big Sur because obviously that was the more important of the two if I were to update. And pretty much everything is on board with Big Sur at this point. And then I have a column for M1. Some stuff is working natively. Some stuff is only with Rosetta. Um, some stuff maybe we're not sure. We can't make any promises. So I've been actively keeping lists, keeping these spreadsheets so I know when it was the right time to update to Big Sur, when it was the right time, you know, eventually when I'm able to update to an Apple Silicon Mac. So should you update to Mac OS Big Sur? The answer to that question, my friend, is in your hands. I can't recommend yes or no because I don't know what you own. I don't know what hardware you own or what plugins you own. So again, I'll include the links to that Sweetwater article, the Pro Tools Expert article to Apple. So you can check through those lists and see which developers and manufacturers are ready to go with Big Sur, which ones are ready to go with Apple Silicon. But the thrust of that original article and this video is just to hesitate, just hold off on updating until you're absolutely sure that everything that you use with your Mac is up to snuff, is compatible, is ready to go. And always, always, always make sure to create a backup using Time Machine or whatever you so choose, Carbon Copy Cloner, Whatever the app is, doesn't matter. Just make sure to back up your system. So if you run into a situation that is irritating at best and completely cataclysmic at worst, you can roll back your Mac system. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.